We are back and it is January of 2020. Welcome back to P3. First of all, we wanna thank our local business here, Coffee and Cream in Livonia, Michigan, near Westland. If you are in the area, we wanna support all of our local businesses. Make sure you stop in. But we're here with Jay Johnson from the Coyus Group. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Steve. So one of the things I talked about a ton last year, Jay, and we've talked about it, and I've talked about it in the P3 series before, is this whole idea of developing. Mm -hmm. But developing leaders is one of the things that I wanted to talk with you about. You've been training for how many years now? 12. Well, give the audience a little bit of your background. Sure. Uh, so I started training at Wayne State University. I was actually hired right out of uh, graduate school to be a strategic communications director for the industrial and systems engineering department. Kind of strange given that I had a communications yeah, degree no and kidding. I went right into no engineering. Kidding. But at some point in time, I put together a program that was to train faculty how to work better with international students and international students how to acclimate to the American classroom. And it was a really successful program. And one of the faculty members came up after and said, you should do this professionally. And the moment they said that, it was just one of those things where like, maybe I should. And that was really how I got my career started. Now, in between training, just so everybody knows, you're also an entrepreneur. You've gone through that as well. And you're currently an entrepreneur today. Yeah, so we started uh, in 2008, I started WorldLink Communications because I was gonna link the world through better communications and uh, built that company up. And in 2015, I sold that company to existing partners and we recreated it as Coeus Creative Group. Okay, so let's get back. So a lot yep. of the time that we spent last year was talking about this idea of developing. P3 is all about people, performance, and profits as we've talked about. But one of the things we didn't spend a lot of time on is this whole idea of developing leaders. Here's my thought and rationale. Let's see what your thoughts are on this, Jay. Is that as leaders, we all have kind of a cap. If we don't develop ourselves, it's gonna to be tough for us to develop the people that work with us and for us. So we're basically putting an artificial lid on our teams if as leaders, we don't become better. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? And if you're talking to a CEO about development and leadership and the things that you and I talk about, What's the advice you would give them based on that? You know, I love what you said there because when you talked about leadership, you talked about it being developing the team that's below you. Yeah. And I think that that's something that's so easily missed by a lot of leaders is that your job is to create that, that funnel of those people around you and develop them in the best way possible. So from my perspective, you know, maybe this is a little biased given that I have a communications background, but okay. I think one of the most important things in developing leaders is helping them to develop their communication. How are they perceived? What is their, uh, what is their way that they communicate down or across? What kind of feeling or culture are they building with their communication style? Are they the leader that is you know, pulled back and nobody feels like they can come and talk to? Or are they the leader that's on the ground floor with everyone else, giving them the opportunity to make better connections? And that's really what I liked is the connections. So broad brush, there's, there's a lot of discussion this past year, 2019, that we just finished out about CEOs saying that their people are their, their most important asset. And again, we go back to this idea of development and so on. But I wanna keep coming back to this idea of leaders developing themselves. Where do you think they get it wrong? I think in a lot of cases, they get, get it wrong because of the whirlwind. You're at the top, you're trying to manage all of the different pieces of an organization. And sometimes you forget about that primary purpose of self-development, self-care even in some cases. Uh, you know, when we find a leader that is stressed or anxious or frustrated or feeling like they're caught in that daily whirlwind, what happens is, is they forget to keep themselves ahead of the game, ahead of the curve. They forget to go out and develop those individual skills. They forget to develop themselves as, how can I be better tomorrow as an individual, which then makes me a better leader for the whole. So let's let's go practical. Yeah. Like we've talked about this. I know you're a pretty practical guy, and a lot of these people that are watching are saying, okay, what does that really mean? I'm a CEO, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm some level of business leader, I've got teams that report to me, and you're talking about me developing myself. Look, I ain't got time to develop anything mm -hmm. because of all the work that we have. And right now the economy is really good, so it's busy. Give me the practical approach. What do I do as a leader? 
I use a couple of different strategies, whether I'm traveling internationally at that point in time, I take that time to really either read or to listen to audiobooks or to find something that's interesting, a podcast, uh, you know, potentially something that's going to give me at least an opportunity to think. That's one of my critical things is just taking a step back sometimes and thinking. If I'm not thinking, that means that I'm not innovating. That means that I'm not pushing the next envelope. That means I'm not coming up with a new process in order to get the people uh, the skills that they need. So taking those very small moments sometimes, and they're just tiny little moments, but 15 minutes of listening to a TED talk while you're in a car and just hearing it is something that gives you that opportunity. Finding those unique spots, wherever those spots might be, that you can say, I'm gonna evaluate exactly how I just handled this situation. Five minutes after a meeting, sitting back, writing out a few notes for yourself. How did I communicate? What was my perception? Maybe that's in a journal form. Maybe that's just taking notes, whatever that might be. But those five minute increments that we forget that we have in a day, if we prioritize them towards that self-development, it really makes a huge impact over the course of a day or a year or so on and so forth. So let's, let, we're gonna drill down a little bit more. So yeah. I, we've been in the, I've been in the talent business for 27 years. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna tell you how old I am, but it's been a long <laughs> time, right? And one of the things that, and you already mentioned this, one of the things that teams talk about about their leaders often is they don't communicate well. You just referenced it a little bit ago. If, if you were gonna give three kind of practical approaches to how leaders need to develop their community, what do they need to look for? How, how do they need to view communication maybe in a different way? Sure. There's multiple components to that. What, what's the advice you would give, the, the kind of practical three things that they should be looking at? Sure, one, ask for feedback. Yeah. If you're yeah. the leader, and you have to ask for honest feedback because when you're the leader, a lot of times, People don't wanna give you the honest feedback per se, but don't find yourself in an echo chamber. One of the things that you really need to focus on is developing enough trust with the people that you're surrounding yourself with that they can say, hey Jay, you know, I don't think you handled this the best at the meeting. Here's maybe a solution that you could consider trying in the next place. Okay. So soliciting that feedback is absolutely critical. Ask for it and expect honesty. And expect honesty. Now, before you get to number two and number three, Asking for it and getting honesty are two very different things. A lot of leaders will say, I, I always ask for feedback. I'm always asking, but nobody wants to tell me. How do you, what's going on? So one of the ways that I like to do this, a very practical application is I would approach it and say, hey, listen, I feel like I didn't handle this part of the meeting particularly well. Would you have any feedback for me to improve it? Identifying that you saw something wrong there makes it easier for the other person you admit you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. <laughs> I think that I made a mistake here. Is there feedback that you could offer me that I could get better? And then all of a sudden somebody says, I don't have to tell them that they did bad. Cause that's the thing that's scary is telling yeah. your boss that you didn't J do a J good job suck. on the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if I say, I don't think I handled that the best way possible, what might be a strategy that you would have? I'm going to get that feedback. And they're also gonna say, no, I think you handled it well. Yeah, but if I was to handle it again, how would you maybe handle it differently? And you follow up with those questions. It's the same as coaching, right? The first time that you ask somebody, how would you solve this? Well, I'm not sure. Well, if you were sure, how would you solve it? That's right. You know, and you just kind of push that envelope a little bit, but you do it in a, in a productive and positive and, and happy way. Okay, so ask for feedback, open the door to be a little bit more vulnerable, number one, which is, Easier said than done, but it needs to sure. be done. What's number two? Number two, in the communications world, one of the things that we need to look at is how do other people communicate? If somebody communicates very directly with me, very quickly, very fast, I wanna be able to match that communication style. If I see somebody that takes their time in how they're communicating, or if I ask a question and you see them ponder <laughs> off for a few minutes, yeah. I'm not gonna to wanna to barrage that person with Okay, my next question is, my next question is, I'm gonna give that person a moment to logically process and think. And there's different ways that you can see these different communication patterns occur, but if you communicate with somebody in the way that they communicate, you immediately start building rapport. And that's actually founded well in neuroscience. So when we say mirroring, everybody's heard of the concept of mirroring, right? You're supposed to yeah, mirror. Yeah, if you turn other, left, I'm turning right? left. If you turn right, I'm turning right. But everybody knows like if I do this and I'm doing this posture, eventually the other person's gonna kind of pick up on it and go, hey, wait doing? a second, what, what are you, are you doing? doing, right? Yeah. Interestingly enough, it is virtually impossible to detect that you're mirroring somebody's communication style. 
their tone, their inflection, their enthusiasm, as long as it's done through tone and inflection. How do they know this? They actually measures measured people with you know EKGs and all the beautiful neuroscience technology that exists now. They measure people to see what kind of like relationship are they able to build. If I start doing this with tone and inflection, matching your style, your body will naturally start posturing towards mine. And then this mirroring happens very naturally. And it's much more rapport building etiquette. So we get this little bit more exactly. of a connection between exactly. the two. So from a leadership perspective, I'm having greater influence on the person that I'm actually trying to lead and trying to communicate with. All right, so asking for feedback, doing a little bit of this mirroring, but not just from a posturing perspective, an actual verbal pace, those things that you talked about. What's the, the third big thing that you'd say around communication makes all the world a difference? Around communication is communicating vulnerability. Okay. You're not perfect as a leader. Yeah. And the problem is, is leadership gets really lonely. And a lot of times we feel like we can't be, we can't be vulnerable or we can't do, you know, these things or communicate or say that I'm sorry in some cases. I've seen that a lot of times when I'm teaching any kind of high performing teams, the leader's like, well, I have to be perfect. If you're perfect, that sets a standard or scares the hell out of your team. They're not necessarily looking for the perfect leader. They're looking for the leader that makes the best connection with them, that they feel that they're aligned in their in their mission, that they feel that they're aligned in their uh, the way that they're approaching things. It feels that they have their back. So showing a little vulnerability, but also communicating that element of, hey, listen, we're on this road, we're gonna get on this road together. We're gonna to work through any challenges, difficulties, barriers that we come across, but it's really doing it in a way that says, this is us and the challenges on the outside are them. So, so I'm glad you say you don't have to be perfect because I got two of my team members over here watching us right now. And if I said I was perfect, they'd shoot me, right? So, <laughs> so we know that's not, that's not the case. So that, that's, that's actually really great advice. And these are things that you're teaching on and you're doing, you're doing sessions all across the globe on, yeah. on this stuff, right? So yeah. that, that's, you're a good resource for anybody who's watching. Now, I do want to switch gears a little bit. Sure. Keep, keep on this idea of, of leadership and so on. But again, the name of the, the, the podcast or the name of the video is People Performance Profits. What I don't include in there is this first piece that I call pro, or purpose. And, and it's, a, it's a term that I think is overused. In 2000, the end of 2019, large organizations, small organizations were coming to this idea of you gotta be driven by purpose. But there's a lot of discussion around what the hell is purpose? Well, in your mind from a leadership and driving performance out of people, do you see a correlation between purpose and performance? And what is that correlation that you see? 